my utmost. Have you ever wanted to rule the world? <laughs> you know that song, Rule the World or something? No? Are you sure? Have you ever, like, told someone, like a Christian, that they're not doing something right? Or they're doing something wrong? Or that you've told some other person or some other ministry that they should be doing it a different way? Or have you looked at some great man of God and said, Oh, he's wrong. Do you really want to rule the world? <laughs> Are you sure you're supposed to be in charge of what you're doing? Or do you think that God is in control? Because you see, there's a different way of looking at life that you can choose to do or you can choose not to do. You can choose to judge and make according to your own image what you think the way things ought to be or you can not judge and you can see from God's perspective the grace and mercy that he's extended to people and allow him to be in control so that he can do what he wants to do as you trust him with all your heart leaning not into your own understanding in all your ways acknowledging him and let him direct your path so the choice is yours. You can go out and tell the world how wrong they are. You can run out and tell your neighbor how wrong they are. You can run around like a chicken with his head cut off and squawk about the sky is falling. Of course, with your head cut off, it might be kind of a strange voice that you're singing because really you're just spewing blood all over the place. But sometimes isn't that what people do when they want to rule the world and they don't want to trust God? to do what he said he could do better than we can? Do you trust the Lord for the church? Or do you only trust him up to a point and then you feel like you need to be in control? That's the issue. Are we allowing God to be the one who leads, directs, and guides individual people to discover, uncover, learn, develop, and become more like Jesus as they grow like little children in the sandbox, sometimes kicking up sand, but sometimes getting it in their own eyes. I know for myself, I've had to kind of take myself out of the sandbox every now and then and realize that what I was doing might not have been the best thing that God wanted me to do. Are you ever disturbed? Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, John 14, 27. There are times when our peace is based upon ignorance. But when we awaken to the facts of life, inner peace is impossible unless it is received from Jesus. When our Lord speaks peace, he makes peace. His words are ever spirit and life. Have I ever received what Jesus said? My peace I give unto you. It is a peace that comes from looking into his face and realizing his undisturbedness. Are you painfully disturbed or bugged right now? Does something get your goat? <laughs> Are you distracted by the waves and billows of God's providential permission of allowing someone to do as they chose to do? And having, as it were, turned over the boulders of your belief, are you finding no well of peace or joy or comfort? Is all barren? Then look up and receive the undisturbedness of the Lord Jesus. He is in control. Reflected peace is the proof that you are right with God because you are at liberty to turn your mind to Him. You can focus on Him and not what was distracting or attracting you or causing you to be disturbed. If you are not right with God, you can never turn your mind anywhere but on yourself and your reactions and actions to what's disturbing you. If you allow anything to hide the face of God from you, you are either disturbed or you have a false security. Are you looking into and unto Jesus right now? Are you talking to him about the circumstances and situation which has caused you unrest? Are you looking at the immediate matter that is pressing and receiving from him peace? 
If so, he will be a gracious benediction of peace in and through you. He will not only cause peace to come to you, he will cause peace to flow from you. But if you try to worry it out, you obliterate him and deserve all you get. For that which you reap, you will sow. We get disturbed because we have not been considering Jesus. We have thought of all the reasons we're right, but not necessarily why we're wrong, or where we need to go to do what only God can do in us and for us, which is peace. When one confers with Jesus, the perplexity goes away, because he has no perplexity, and our only concern is to abide in him. Lay it all out before him. Tell him everything about it and what you're feeling. And in the face of difficulty, bereavement, and sorrow, hear him say to you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. For me, I admit, I have, just like you, certain things that still get me. They still trip me up. And then when something like this comes along, it's the Lord just kind of going, see, don't get distracted. And frankly, I do, you know, for whatever righteous reason I think I have. Sometimes I get distracted too. And I need to just go back to who I know as opposed to what I know. And when you stick with who you know, I don't think what you know will trip you up as much as it does. Because when it's about who you know, then it's also about what you heard from him as opposed to what you learned <laughs> and think you learned in wisdom.